How's it going, everybody? Welcome to this week's Lumix Live. We've got a really exciting session for everybody today. Uh, we're continuing the photography focus on the uh, Lumix Live platform while we're coinciding with the Photo Plus Plus Expo that's going on. Uh, as a reminder, we are multicasting this to our YouTube platform as well as over on Photo Plus Plus. So if you're over on YouTube and you have questions throughout the session, make sure to tag at Lumix Cameras before your question uh, so that we can see them, get them answered, and kind of walk through the whole process. Uh, we're going to be covering the sports photography uh, aspect of the cameras. Sorry, I had to fix my shirt there. We're... Uh, um, Yes, uh, we will be covering sports photography with Michael Richardson, one of my uh, uh, team members here, one of our Lumix ambassadors. So we'll hear from him in a few seconds. Uh, for everybody that's over on the Photo Plus Plus platform, make sure to use the chat bar uh, or the questions, uh, the Q&A little thing on there uh, to drop your questions in. These are interactive sessions. We love having conversations back and forth and addressing the topics that you guys may have uh, about, in this case, sports photography with the Lumix system. Uh, if you are new to this platform and want to follow us more on YouTube, this is a weekly event that we do traditionally on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, but we will um, be continuing these even after Photo Plus, so make sure to go over and like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon, all that kind of fun stuff that you have to do with YouTube, uh, you know, to kind of keep the channel pumped up. So... Um, while we're going through the kind of intros here, sound off in both of the chats on Facebook or on um, Photo Plus uh, Expo and over on YouTube where you guys are joining us from uh, while we uh, bring Michael in on this conversation. I'll make sure I got all my stuff set up here. Sorry for a little bit of a hectic change up here. But um, yeah, so let's get into it. Hey, uh, Michael, how you doing? Pretty good. How is everybody today this afternoon? Well, you know, hanging in there, hanging in there. It's a it's a beautiful day down here in Texas. How is it out in California for you? Uh, greetings from sunny Southern California. It's like 80 degree weather. So I'm, <laughs> I'm enjoying the fantastic weather. For those of you that are in the East Coast, I feel sorry for you. Sorry, I'm a warm weather guy. So uh, really enjoying the 80 degree weather. We'll talk about the cold weather and uh, shooting football up north in Seattle a little bit later on this afternoon and how I feel about that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, um... To kind of kick this off, can you give everyone uh, a bit of a kind of bio, you know, who you are, what you do with, with uh, Panasonic Lumix? I'm Mike Richardson, Southern California sales representative for the Southern California area. Uh, I handle Sammy's camera, pretty much our predominant uh, uh, location out here with uh, four stores in Southern California area, as well as pretty much everything else on the Southern California end of the world. And then when, when we're not in the COVID society, then I travel around covering uh, you know, Las Vegas, sometimes San Francisco, and sometimes I make Photo Plus when we're back in New York. But of course, uh, you're live here in my kitchen this morning or this afternoon, and uh, we're going to talk sports photography. Uh, I come cool. from uh, 30 years of commercial photography before I joined uh, Panasonic, and sports photography has been kind of, I call it my therapy. It's my, my getaway. It's the way I like to, uh, believe it or not, it's the way I relax. Uh, I was a commercial photographer for many years, shooting primarily uh, products and specializing in things that were highly reflective, like chrome and cars and all kinds of crazy things like that, where I might spend anywhere from a day to two days just to get one photo and, you know, put everything together with tweezers and white cards everywhere and lighting and all kinds of great stuff. So for me, it's kind of fun to go out for the challenge and uh, shoot sports where, kind of everything is thrown out the window. You got to deal with the light that's there, the action that's happening super fast, nothing standing still. Maybe you are as the photographer uh, behind the sidelines there, but everything else is moving around you. And so uh, it was fun for me to be able to uh, get out and do that kind of photography. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, as, as we mentioned for everybody, we are uh, discussing sports photography here. And, and I think... We, there's a lot about what what a lot of people consider sports photography, and you know when when we're out at the trade show, and and Michael, I'm I'm sure you can relate to this. You know, we get a lot of people that will come up, and you know they they want to know about sports photography, they want to know about action photography, things like that. But your your expertise in this is is a bit different than I think what a lot of a lot of people may be assuming when when we're talking about sports photography because let's let's face it panasonic lumix 
we're not as well known for sports photography. Um, in the and that's cameras. unfortunate. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, so can you give us a, a, a bit of a kind of background for you with, with sports photography, you know, kind of what, what you do, what, what your, your kind of area is with this to kind of level set what, what your experiences are for people? Well, my obsession has, is always been photography. I mean, I've shot sports, uh, and the, in the world of, of, uh, everything from high school, believe me, that was what, five years ago for me. Um, you know, I started out shooting the football games at high school for the yearbook after I finished cross country practice, things like that. Uh, you know, in college, uh, I have an AA degree and a BA degree in photography. Uh, when I did that and was on the newspaper staff, I was the go-to guy that, uh, you know, shot that. Um, I'll be very honest with you as far as photography is concerned. I've always been, um, I guess my instructors would always call me, I guess, one that always thought he knew it all. How's that? <laughs> so, uh, you know, when I was out there shooting, uh, I had one instructor that finally decided I was out there with my, you know, Nikon high eye point F3 and loads and loads <laughs> of film. And I'd come back and try and get, you know, one or two great frames on Tri-X film. And so he finally challenged me one day and said, uh, give me that gear. I'm going to give you my camera. So I had to shoot a night game with a speed graphic, eight sheets of Tri-X film Ooh. and flash bulbs. And I had to come back with one shot. Oh, man. Find a report. I did come back with one shot, but I did get a whole new feel for, you know, what it takes and, and, and kind of a t step back. Uh, on, you know, what you really have to do and find that decisive moment. It's not always about, you know, holding down the, the shutter and, and getting the, uh, you know, shooting 15 frames a second and hopefully getting one out of that. Um, sure, I, I'll <laughs> shoot a football game, and that's primarily what I shoot is football. I'll shoot 1,400 images, um, and I'm looking for the best, but not because I'm not missing the decisive moment. I'm still eyeing that decisive moment, and, in fact, there are times – uh, I've gotten, you know, the text from the sideline where I'm taking in the moment because I found it just as important as capturing the moment. I felt it was kind of fun to kind of take in that. So um, there's times I'll be on the on the on the field and maybe looking, watching the action. And unfortunately, I'm on TV sometimes. And so you'll see me not with the camera up to my eye. And then the phone's going off and I'm getting all these texts. Dude, you missed that. Well, I kind of. <laughs> took that interception in and I really enjoyed it. It was fun. And I, I know the guy that caught it and I celebrated with him at the end. And yeah, the referee had to come get me and kick me off the field. But, you know, there, there's, there's all those moments. Um, uh, and that's kind of what sports photography is, is no matter what you're shooting, whether it's volleyball, uh, you know, whether it's football, whether it's soccer, uh, swimming, no matter what it is, cross country, you know, even those kind of sports. Uh, it's all about that decisive moment. And sometimes it's the agony of defeat, as they would say, you know, ABC world, uh, a worldwide world of sports. You know, it's not always the happy times. You know, everybody, there's always a winner and there's always a loser. Um, I had the unfortunate time of when I did a lot of work for uh, football in the USC days of Pete Carroll. It was always a win, and that was great. We had yeah. good times. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. So for for the topic here, I want to um, – actually jump over and you know kind of start actually going through some of your your history here with with photography and and your kind of progression because you haven't always shot sports photography with lumix cameras that was something that came you know down the line so i right. want to let me see if i do this right here we go and i i'll be honest with you i've never really just shot even before I worked for, for Panasonic Lumix, I shot two or three different uh, varieties of gear. You know, we've talked about in the beginning, I mentioned shooting, you know, an F3 with film. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, back in the darkroom days, souping uh, Tri-X to 3200 with my own, you know, custom mix and, <laughs> you know, high uh, temperature processing and lots of agitation so that we'd get, uh, you know, some decent grain out of it. Back then, we liked grain. You know, now you look at grain as noise, and uh, you try and get it as clean as possible. So it's kind of interesting how my photography has gone from, you know, walking around with 20 rolls of Tri-X for a game, 
now walking around with two SD cards and running them up a thumb drive to the uh, press box to get my editors the, the images at halftime. Yeah. Um, you know, it's really amazing how things have changed from, you know, having that ab ability to soup images and not have an editor need anything till late in the evening or the next day. Now to have an editor that wants stuff, and we'll talk about this later when we get into talking about G-Series, you know, literally wanting, wanting that touchdown image within minutes. So it's, it's a whole different world. Yeah. And, and Panasonic has made that a lot easier for me. But we've, I've covered <laughs> everything. I've shot Nikon. I've shot Canon. Uh, but I really enjoy shooting the Lumix lineup currently. Cool. So, yeah, let's let's actually take a look at some of those images. So I have here um, uh, the images that that you sent over to me. And I, I wanted to start with the um, the earlier stuff, um, the sure. the work before uh, Lumix, which these look like they were on a, a one series uh, Canon this camera. This is uh, Canon 1DX. Uh, I am basically a shooter of when I shoot football. Uh, and, and pretty much that's the way I will always shoot. Uh, I'm either a wide guy or I'm a big long lens guy. So a lot of this stuff is 400-2.8 on uh, a Canon 1D. My right shoulder is lower than my left shoulder because I'm always carrying that uh, giant piece of glass on my, on my shoulder on a monopod. So uh, <laughs> I walk kind of one side because of that. Um, and uh, the other stuff would all be super wide. But uh, most of these images are probably shot uh, 4028. Very cool. Very cool. So I actually want to kind of walk through some of these here. Um, so I'm going to zoom in on a couple of them because there's yep. one of those things that, um, you know, going down this path and, and for those that are looking and kind of wondering, well, why are we covering images like this from, you know, years ago that aren't even with Lumix equipment? There's, there's a, a, a method to the madness that, that we're, oh, yes. uh, talking about here so we're going to um, talk about the progression and why why it's easier yeah. for me now than it ever was before yeah so you know looking at at some of these images that you have here you know um could you give us a little bit of a, a background if if you um remember um because what is it these were back in 2008 <laughs> yep yeah um Brian Cushing, about the process Coach norton yeah. linebackers that's pretty much uh my group of guys uh and in fact during 2008 those were those were the boys Val Luga, Cushing, uh, oh, there's my favorite coach, Pete Carroll, uh, <laughs> always, always out there on the line, you know, trying to get everybody teaching teachable moments. Everything was a positive thing. I took a lot of life lessons from that man and still keep those to today. Yeah. So one of the things I'm Mark noticing is against Cal. <laughs> one of the sky. Hey, there you go. One of the things I'm noticing with um, with a lot of these images, it's you know we we, we talk about what you mentioned a little bit before about noise and grain in, in images. And as, as someone who, who clearly, you know, you worked, you, you shoot on the sidelines with this stuff. These are images that were accepted for, for broadcast, for publication, stuff like that with, with these teams. Right. And correct. We've never really had that, that kind of modern obsession with noise until recently with these things now not not to diminish those that are um you know really pushing for the cleanest possible image the, the technological advances over the years are amazing and i think using some of this as a baseline to like show like look you know images that were you know kind of iconic you know they they have that look that a lot of people you know kind of always strive for that shallow depth of field um yep. you know the the tack sharp focus on the player that you're going for the expression in the faces during a play, it's all about I, the composition that's that's important. You know, getting those images that that convey the 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 moment. Um, you had mentioned um, before about you know kind of your lens choices, and I think this is this is kind of a, a good point to to mention here because this is with again this is with a a, a one series DSLR. Correct. And I see that these were shot with a 400 millimeter 2.8. What was the typical lens kit that you would show up on sidelines with when you were shooting DSLRs? <laughs> so it's two Pelican cases, one roller with just the 400 2.8, because that's all I could carry in one case. And then the other would be two bodies. Uh, and then generally, I am a prime guy. So uh, back in the day, I would be a 400 2.8 and then... I would have my wide glass, which would be pretty much uh, 20 millimeter 
F two eight, and then usually I carry a thirty five, but I don't use it very much. Mostly, I was shooting the twenty or a twenty four, uh, and then I had an eighty five one eight and an eighty five one two that were in my kit, and that was pretty much it. I'll be honest with you, the eighty fives didn't make it out much. Uh, those were mainly for interview shots after the game, uh, but most of my game shots are shot four hundred two eight. Uh, and then wide angle shots when they're, you know, in coaches or I'm in close uh, proximity with uh, the sidelines. Yeah. But a lot of it, I'll say 90 percent of when I'm on the field is that long glass, 200 millimeters or greater. <laughs> I even carried a 200 to eight sometimes, but it rarely came out of the kit. So so basically big, heavy, just gigantic <laughs> lenses lugging around yes. for hours on end. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. So, you know, that about. About 18 pounds for the lens itself, uh, camera body and, and monopod, it's like 20, 22 pounds. And, you know, shoveling that up and down the field uh, adds to your, uh, your exercise for about, you know, four hours. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 it's all good for you, right? Yep. But, I you know. I to be number 23. That was a freight train coming, that guy. Taylor Mays. Oh, man. <laughs> so... Looking at, at, at kind of the progression, you know, um, and actually I want to switch back over to here for a minute. Um, so having shot a lot of your sports photography like this, you know, what, what were the, the kind of points that, you know, kind of drew you towards, you know, working with a micro four thirds camera or in, in this case with the Panasonic Lumix product? I mean, aside from the fact that you work with us, obviously that's a... <laughs> It's kind of a given. Um, hopefully those that are well, watching understand that. But <laughs> it, it is a given and it isn't. Um, you know, when I started with Panasonic, they knew that I shot with Canon. Uh, they knew that I'd be talking, you know, technical things about their gear. But no one ever said to me, you know, they always pr promote. If you have something to shoot that's your own, feel free to do it. Because they know that that's helping me look at how I shoot photography and how I work with gear. And that transitions over to sales practices or... Uh, technical practices, talking about the gear that we use. Um, and, you know, in this instance, we're talking about, yeah, I was using another um, competitor's product, but they're not telling me that I have to do that. So I'll be honest with you. Um, when I started with Panasonic, uh, GH5 had just come out. That was the new latest and greatest. And I decided that I'd take a 100 to 400 zoom lens, the Leica piece of glass, uh, and a GH5 to a game. And my whole concept, along with my 400 28 and my Canon glass, was to shoot the first quarter uh, with the GH5. And I thought to myself, you know, I'll get through the first quarter. I'll get some images. You know, if I get some great stuff, good. But I still got, you know, three other quarters to deliver what I need to to the website. Uh, what I work for is uscfootball.com. And all of my work at that time was basically uh, put up on the web for USC football. So it's a uh, uscfootball.com website that uh, all these images were used for, whether I'm shooting practice or games or interview footage or all that type of thing. We all produce that for uscfootball.com, which is in association with, at some time it's been under ESPN, sometimes it's been under 24-7 sports as it is now. So uh, that's who I work for. And at that point in time, uh, I decided I got through about, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes of that first quarter, well, maybe less than that, probably five minutes of that first quarter, and realized I was getting some great stuff. Um, and I didn't have to worry about, as we call it, chipping, or chimping, as some of the guys call it, you know, constantly looking at the camera to see what exposure is, because you had to do that. Working with a Canon, you know, you're looking through the mirror box, you're not seeing what you're getting until you preview the image. So, you're always noticing if you and if you want to do this, it's kind of fun to watch football games and watch all the photographers looking down, previewing their images. Right. <laughs> well, I don't have to do that. I'm using mirrorless. I'm seeing exactly what I'm getting. I'm getting a preview. I'm not worried about that mirror box flipping and blanking, blacking out all the time. I'm seeing the action as it's coming. It's kind of like watching a great TV show. Yeah. Um, so that's up to my eye. I'm going. I know whether I'm light, dark. Whatever I need to do, I'm seeing what I need. And that was the beginning of going, hey, wait a minute. This is pretty amazing. <laughs> and then I, you guys are going to think I'm nuts, but I'll be honest with you. I even really enjoyed the autofocus. So there's a couple of tweaks on getting it set up right. But everybody's going to say, how can you shoot sports with a GH5, the autofocus? 
Well, I actually love the autofocus on Panasonic. It's just getting used to it and getting it set up right. And once you get it set, I got more images if I was shooting a succession. Say I was following a running back across the field. I always knew that my Canon would go in and out. I'd get maybe frames one and two were good, three and four were soft, five and six were great. It was kind of that way. You kind of knew it. But as I'm looking at back at my images and playing back on my GH5, I'm like, wait a minute. One, two, three. They're all sharp. Four, five, six. It's following all that. So I started thinking to myself, wow, I got through the first quarter. Well, let's get to halftime. And by this time, you know, most of my buddies that have seen me on the field that have always seen me carrying my big giant white glass, they're looking at me carrying my little you know, GH5 and my 100 to 400. And they're going, Mike, what's that toy? Where's your big giant piece of glass? And I'm like, well, I got it over there, but you know, let's, I'm going to try this for a minute. Yeah. And they all kind of laughed at me. But then of course, as we got to halftime and they're all lugging the big stuff and I'm going, Hey, this is great. I'm feeling lightweight, moving along. It got very evident that as I'm editing, I had a lot of people looking over my shoulder, which I usually don't. Everybody's usually in their own little spot. It's a very, very tight spot at the Coliseum. You know, we're all kind of crammed in under this little tunnel walkway. Um, it's not like a beautiful, wonderful place. It's, it's kind of just tucked in the corner, and we're all in folding chairs and tables, and we're all really close, and everybody's laptop is right next to each other. But I had an audience, and they were noticing how great my stuff was looking, and I was not carrying a giant camera. So at third quarter... I decided to not even use the monopod and hand hold it. Yeah. Another great thing about image stabilization at the time, nobody else had image stabilization except a little bit in lens. And at the time I shot my 400-2.8 does not have image stabilization. And the reason I shot the non-image stabilized lens is because it's sharper at that time than what image stabilization in camera was or in body was. So I had a non-IS lens. Yeah. Uh, and image stabilization on gh5 was making my day i shut my stuff up to my editor ran up there at halftime as i do get up in the elevator with the coaches run up there to the press box hand in my thumb drive and my text came back wow mike this stuff looks great you got a new camera and i'm like there you go that's the best thing you ever want to hear <laughs> you know when the client doesn't even know what you're doing and thinks your stuff's looking even better and lo and behold i shot the whole game that way and i haven't turned back i yeah. have used my 400 28 though but I use it with an MC21 on my S series cameras. Very cool. So that 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 actually, um, there's a, a question here from Albert was asking. I, well, it's not posed as a question, but it is a question. So when you're shooting on the sidelines and you're delivering up to to the media box, there's like no retouching that you do, right? Your job is shoot yeah. and deliver. Um, Correct. So, could you walk through a little bit of like like that? Because that's that's got to be a big change in, you know, kind of of mentality for someone that's used to editing and working that way for their images. Correct. <laughs> I got a little my my power here. Just uh, oh here no. <laughs> so yeah. um, so yeah. Shoot that baby up. There we go. So, so basically cool. working, working on the sidelines, just, just to kind of recap. Yep. So working on the sidelines, you capture and deliver your job. Isn't necessarily editing and retouching and stuff like that. Right. Well, it's a little bit kind of twofold. So most of my stuff is delivered to the website. And originally when I first started with them, it was more kind of by the end of the game, we needed to get things to them. And that's on the website. That's on a thumb drive. And so I would normally hand over a thumb drive at the end of the fourth quarter. Um, maybe at halftime, I would pull maybe my 10 best images out of what I shot and then hold those on a thumb drive. And then at the end of the game, I'd find maybe a couple, 10 or 20 more and pop those on the thumb drive. And then usually my editors were down on the field at that time. I'd hand them my thumb drive while I'm shooting some interview shots on the field and we're good to go. And then I would usually get texts while I'm driving home. Uh, here in L.A., it would take me anywhere between an hour and two hours to get back home from the Coliseum, even at 10, 30, 11 or 12 at night, um, because it takes so long to get out of there. So by the time I got home, then I'm getting the text blown up. Hey, I'm looking for some stuff of number 23. I'm looking for number 47. And then I would cull through my images and, and give them some more. And that would continue maybe even into Saturday night 
into Sunday morning, sometimes into Monday, depending upon how active the stories were and what the storyline was for the game. Yeah. Uh, that progressed where I got to the point where it's like, hey, I'm moving so fast now through images because this is what I was doing. When I started working with GH5, two card slots. That was a huge boon for me because what I could now do is send my JPEGs to one card and then send my raw images to card two. Now, there are many times my images get picked up on other uh, news agencies. And so when they want those, say somebody like SportsIllustrated.com wants to put the shot of Sam Dartle on their front page, then, yeah, guess what I'm doing? I'm going to that raw image. I'm editing it. I'm going through Lightroom, Photoshop, making it perfect. And then I will save that image and either email it to them or however it gets delivered or FTP it, however that, that gets to them at their final image. Um, but yeah, I kind of have two things that I have to do, kind of immediate need and then kind of the later on need that I fill in. So I work with JPEG and I work with uh, raw files. And it all depends on, uh, you know, kind of how the game goes. If it's a losing game and there's not much and it's kind of a slow game, the pressure's not on. If it's an amazing game and they've run up the score and it was tight and, you know, they won the game in the last seconds by kickoff, boy, you know, I've got to make sure I've got that, you know, that last field goal or that last touchdown, uh, the celebrations at the end. So the pressure's on to, to, to have all those images. Yeah. So let's actually jump back over and um, take a look. So I just jumped over here into the G series catalog that you sent me. So yep. these are the, these are the images that you've shot with the G series cameras. Um, Correct. And 100 to 400. 100 to 400. Cool. Now, there's there's also some people asking questions about, you know, do you use just the GH5 or are you using a G9? Um, like, what's what's your current G series kit look like? And, and I actually carry both. <laughs> and and just for those asking, we are getting to the S series as well. Um, yeah. We're, we're kind of building blocks here. Building blocks. Oh, here. yeah. So we, we are going to get to the S series because I got a lot of. A lot of great stuff to talk about about the S. <laughs> so um, yeah, so so with this, you're you're shooting GH5 G9s. Obviously, at this time, the G9 Correct. didn't exist yet, but you know, hey. Yep. <laughs> Cur currently, I will kind of decide between G series and S series depending upon what I'm shooting. Uh, you know, in this instance, this was all GH5. Um, I do like the speed of G9, but there is just something about the feel of GH5. That's what I go back to a lot. Um, but I go either way. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's, that's one of the things I think a lot of people, um, you know, just because one camera, like looking at the G9 or the GH5S or not GH5S, the G9 or the GH5 well, side by side. Um, but don't, well, we're going to get to GH5S too. I'm going to talk about that. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a lot about handling and control with a lot of these cameras, you know, finding the one that is most comfortable and easy for you to use while you're actually in the heat of the moment, as opposed to necessarily, you know, the top spec camera, you can have like the most amazing camera in the world, but if it's a pain to use, if you're having to fiddle with menus all the time, or, you know, the, the distance, like where, where your grip is between the lens and your fingers, if that's too tight, it can totally destroy the usability of a camera. So I'm, I'm curious. And, and actually I, I kind of lean with you. A lot of times I like to take my GH five out and go shoot with it because of the form yep. factor of it. Um, although now with the S five, I've primarily been using that for my <laughs> photography because of that live composite mode, but we're going to talk about that <laughs> next week. Um, so looking through these, you know, obviously for, for those that, that, have always talked about, you know, with micro four thirds and with Panasonic focusing is, is not as good or, you know, it's, it's not something you'd rely on. I, I know for a fact that, you know, you are, are really challenging that, that statement that a lot of people make because the focusing from a stills perspective, I think is, has always been really, really solid and it's, it's only gotten better. Incredible. Yeah. So could you walk through a little bit of, um, you know, kind of, what what you found worked really well uh, for the focusing with this kind of stuff? Like, do you use the face detection, body detection with the newer cameras, or single yep. point? Like, what's what's your process for AF? GH5, I'm I'm really a fan of working with um, custom multi. So I work with a smaller kind of small circular area, uh, and the beauty of that is using the joystick on the back of the camera. I'm able to put that kind of where I want. 
Uh, and so the beauty of uh, kind of the hardest part, I guess, in working with sports photography is kind of having to pre-visualize where you're at. So, I mean, here's a guy, here's a running back running down. I know I want to want to place him not down the center of the frame. So I've got my focus area maybe to the left or I'm moving it to the left as I'm following him. And I'm trying to get that focus area to, you know, get near the, near the numbers. Um, you know, great place for contrast to be that yellow and that red. And that just seems to pick up really, really well. So I'm able to work with numbers on jerseys, uh, you know, back in the day, even manual focus wise, you were always looking at numbers on jerseys for, uh, you know, a great way of knowing where you got the focus to be. Yeah. Uh, and so that's where I'm working. I'm, I'm working usually custom multi continuous focus. Uh, I've pushed up the speed a little bit, uh, pushed up the sensitivity a little bit. I think I'm plus two on both. And um, it works for me really, really well. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, that's, that's, I think that that point that comes to a lot of people over time is that, you know, as you get comfortable with your camera, you're going to just naturally be able to work it faster, get it into the position yep. that you want. Like you said, be able to adjust that focus frame and use the mode that works best for you. Um, exactly. And this is where I, I want to take a, a, a moment and, and definitely try to put this one to bed. There's a lot of people that talk about how micro four thirds in general for the platform, you can't get shallow depth of field. It's impossible. <laughs> I just was going to say that on this image. Yeah. Look at this one. You've got tack sharp imagery right on the player. You've got that beautiful blown out background. And I'd be hard pressed if anybody were able to pick out a full frame camera image from this image in micro four thirds, because you, you've had experience. You, you know how to work with distances and the lens. And I'm, you know, that's, I think, one of the beauties with Micro Four Thirds is obviously, as you mentioned before, it's smaller, it's lighter. You get yep. the same reach in, in this case with the 100 to 400, you're getting longer reach. I get more, right. <laughs> so how often um, do you find yourself with the 100 to 400, how often do you find yourself all the way out at 400 millimeter for this kind of work? Or do Quite you kind bit, of change actually. it around? Quite a bit. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. Because I'm, I'm that long glass guy. I mean, I would shoot a 600 F4 if I could afford one. Um, <laughs> you know, that, that's kind of where it's at. Um, and, and, you know, more and more, um, in, in this instance, well, okay, looking at this, when I was shooting the stuff that we showed earlier, the older stuff, you know, we had uh, a much more freedom on the field of where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. um, later on, as we moved in the last couple of years, the rules are a lot tighter with the Pac-12, so I don't have that freedom of being everywhere I want to be. Um, so I've got to be between the 30s. So from the 30-yard line to the end zone on either side of the field is my, my place to roam. I can't be between the 30s. I can't be at the 50-yard line. So I've got to be further. I'm, there are times when the action is there, I'm going to be further away. So that longer glass uh, is really helpful. And, you know, more and more guys are just kind of planting themselves more in the end zone and working with the longer glass. I tend to work the side more, um, kind of the sideline view. I always love everything low. So I'm shooting on, on my knees or lower, um, you know, working on a monopod down low. I'm not standing up, um, you know, always down low, working, working that lower angle. So you're kind of looking up so you can kind of see into the helmets. Yeah. Um, my, my editor likes to call me, my nickname is eyes as in <laughs> eyes, eyeballs. Um, because I've always got images where you can see the, the, the guy's eyes. You can see the, the, the emotion from the, from the, uh, from the person playing behind that, that, you know, helmet and the face mask. Eyes are really important. It gives you that kind of look into the soul and kind of gives you that determination. And so uh, that's my nickname from one of my editors is I'm, I'm eyes, Mike, <laughs> the eyes Richardson. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's definitely something that I've, I've noticed when I was looking at these images before we, we uh, went live with this is that you, th there's so much about the composition that you're doing because of the angle you're choosing, you know, knowing, knowing where you can be on the field and working with the glass that, there's there's so much you know kind of it sounds corny but there's so much emotion in the player's eyes because there's yep. you know that laser focus on on you know where he's got to get that ball to or you know 
being able to see who's coming at his side to you know you know to to take him down. So that's that's I think definitely something that that a lot of people may not think about when you're photographing no, sports. And, you know, and 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 you don't see that until you're you're down on the field. So I try to convey that. Um, but I think the perfect example I'll give is is a, a player, one of my favorites, uh, linebacker. We mentioned him earlier, Ray Maluga. Um, he was off the field. In other words, once you got, I won't say off the field, off the playing field. So once you get on the sideline, jovial, fun, great. We, we would have a great time. He'd borrow my cameras. He'd go out and shoot, come back and bring me images. Uh, you know, it was fun stuff. We had a great time. But the minute he stepped that one foot across the line onto the playing field, you could literally see his face change. <laughs> and the, that warrior mentality came out. And, and believe me, that's the last guy you want to get hit by. Um, <laughs> it was just like a brick wall. I mean, it's insane. Um, and, and the noise is, is one thing that I could never convey with stills because the noise when he would hit people was, was always something that would blow me away. But those are the kind of things that you want to try and convey in your images sometimes is the speed of the game, um, the forcefulness of the game, and kind of the, the, the I guess I'll call the chess game. The thinking yeah. part of it, the thinking man's part of it. You know, it's not all just about smash mouth. It's, it's, it's really a lot about, you know, <laughs> thinking about how you're going to get that ball down there. And, and what a lot of people don't notice is, you know, you get on these long plays, these quarterbacks are releasing the ball before the guy's even down there where it's supposed to be. That's what always blows me away. And so the, the hard part of my job is to kind of, that's the fun part of my job. But the hard part of my job is to kind of predict What's going to happen? So is it a pass play? Is it a running play? Um, and so that's where you kind of learn to kind of watch how they line up and kind of get an idea in your head when you're seeing what they're doing, certain things, just kind of kind of figure out what's going on and kind of understand, well, you think it's going to be a long play, so you need to kind of work your gear downfield, or is it going to be something up close and it's going to happen right in your face? Um, those are the kind of things that I work with on a, on a game-to-game basis. Yeah. So the the last couple images that we're um, that we're taking a look 18. at here, yeah, because um, there's there's some people that have been asking, um, you know, do you guys have so like what? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm I'm, okay. I'm 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 reading chat at the same time to make sure that I'm getting the questions right that people are asking. So um, let's ask, let's answer some questions. Yeah, let's actually do that. Let's let's jump back here and and uh, take a look at some of the questions because some of them I think. Obviously, a lot of people that that we work with and, and interact with, um, you know, come from the video side of the brand. So there there are certain things that may not be as relevant for a lot of the shooting. So w- one of the questions was, you know, are are you using ND filters when you're shooting? You know, to get shallowed up the field. No. Uh, so even on those day games, I'm I'm shooting at a low ISO. So maybe you know. ISO 100, 200, but probably more in the 400 to 800 range. Because remember, even though I'm shooting this way and it's maybe a bright sunny day, I'm looking for the fastest shutter speed possible. And I'll be honest with you, when you look at some of those uh, night game shots, the Coliseum until recently with the redo that they did in the last couple of years at night was probably one of the darkest places to work. So, you know, you're lucky even at like 60, 400 ISO, to pull wide open at maybe 250th of a second. And if you've yeah. got a running back running down, coming your way at 250th of a second, you're not going to stop nothing. It's going to be a blur. <laughs> so you're going to try and be in that, you know, 500th of a second, 1,000 range. So yeah. you're, you're kicking your ISO up as high as you can or in the other respect, respect if it's a bright, sunny day, man, you're, you're, you're just loving that 1,000, 2,000th of a second that you can get. So, uh, no, I'm not using ND filters. That's just basically – cramming down as low on the ISO as I can go. And I'm a wide open aperture guy, as you can see by a lot of the backgrounds on these shots. So everything's shot wide open. I'm not stopping down hardly at all for anything. Even those night shots with wide angle, I'm, I'm, I'm wide open at four. Huh. Um, so one of the other questions that came in here was, um, so obviously a lot of the micro four third stuff that we're showing is shot with the 100 to 400, but have you used the 100 to 300 for for any of the the sport shooting as well? Yeah, I've used the 100 to 300, but then I also have this beauty that I have to talk about. So this is the <laughs> Leica 200 millimeter 28. 
And, and yes, I can hold the equivalent of my Canon 400-2.8 in one hand and, and it's, it weighs nothing. And the other great thing about this lens that I, that I think people miss out on is, let's take the hood off because that really shows the beauty how small this really is. Yeah. This lens is the equivalent to my giant 18-pound uh, Canon 400-2.8, which would probably be, you know, it would, it would go out of the camera shot. Let's just say that. It's huge. <laughs> Uh, yeah. This lens is fantastic, and this is what I'm carrying now when I go out and shoot. So I will carry a 100 to 400 because it gives me the flexibility of the zoom. Even though I know I said I'm a prime guy, Panasonic has kind of made me change that recently with all the Leica glass. I'm yeah. noticing that I can get exceptional images out of the, the zoom factor as well as the, the prime factor of glass. Um, this, this thing is amazing, and the beauty like I'm getting to is short focal distance. So I can do close focus distance on this lens at about 3.3 feet. Uh, incredible. Uh, 400-2.8 Canon, uh, you know, I'd be out of the picture. I'd be over there. Uh, <laughs> I think my, my close focus distance on my 400-2.8 Canon is about 12 feet. So big difference. So if I'm on the field and I'm shooting practice at the beginning of the game, I used to love shooting the practice of the, uh, the receivers. So they'd all line up and the quarterbacks always show, you know, throwing the ball at the same spot and the receivers are all in the same spot. Perfect for me. Don't have to worry about them moving around. Great yeah. way to get that great shot of, you know, kind of t tight helmet, eyes, ball catch. Um, yeah. That's when I love to get those shots is, is when they're doing practice before the game or at practice. Yeah. And with my 428, I'm over there. But with this piece of glass, I'm, I'm really in close, so I can really see what's going on. I'm getting that really tight shot. I'm getting eyes up nice and close. Uh, but the beauty of it is the weight. I mean, I can handhold this. It's got a great tripod collar. I probably still carry a monopod with it uh, just for fun, but I can handhold it. It is that lightweight. Yeah, and that's, that's I think, one of the, the, the cool things with the Micro Four Thirds platform is that, you know, it's, it's really cool with – the entire system that we have, that there are all of these premium series lenses. So for those that haven't looked at the Lumix series of lenses, Leica is our premium series glass. So anything that has the Leica badge on it. But we also make stellar lenses for those that may not want to jump into the monetary expense for something like the 200 yep. millimeter or the 100 to 400 with our 100 to 300. Now we're on a exactly. version two of it now. Um, you get a little bit less reach on that lens, so it's only 100 to 300 versus 100 to 400 that the Leica lens has. But a lot of the stuff that Mike is covering, you're going to have very similar results out of that lens. You know, you just may have to move a little bit closer um, for for the exactly. situation. And and I think that's that's cool for a lot of the you know a, a lot of photographers out there that are just trying to get into this that want to photograph you know their their kids sports or photograph you know events from distance especially now that we have to be out at distance more you yes. know lenses like the 100 to 300 the 45 to 200 become those great ways to get into this without having to spend a ton of money in on the platform if you don't know if it's something that you're going to really really want to dive all the way into because as you can see with with the passion that 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 Michael's talking about with this it, it is a passion. You, you really yep. start to, to push and push and push and want, you know, the next top tier lens that's available. Um, it's always that way. But, but I'm going to go back just one step. Yeah. I've not always had that opportunity. Yeah. I, am, I have an amazing, amazing opportunity working for Panasonic. Yes, I have the opportunity to pretty much have one of everything. And I can just turn around and say, oh, hey. Yeah, today I'll take the 200 2A. Tomorrow I'll take the 1 or the 400. I've not always had that opportunity. I've worked my way up, believe me. Um, yeah. I've always cherished my equipment because I always had to earn it. Um, when I started my studio 30 years ago, it was a beach chair, a telephone, <laughs> one camera, and a couple of lenses. And that's how I started my, my commercial career. Um, hey, there you, you know, go. it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, I had all this gear. So it's, it, it is definitely a blessing to have the opportunity to do all these things. Uh, yeah, I had a 428 Canon lens and I bought it used because that's all I could afford. You know, <laughs> you can't always buy a $10,000 lens, but I worked, worked a long time to get to that. So before yeah. I shot with 428, sure, I shot with a 100 to 300 or I shot with, 
you know, uh, uh, two eight, what was it, a one fifty to four hundred something, some zoom yeah. lens. So we've all been there, and yeah. you know, you can all aspire to to get the latest and greatest, but it's not necessary. You know, get out there, take a look. Um, yeah, I'm I'm that crazy parent that shows up to my daughter. She will she will testify to this. Uh, even as a youngster at softball, my dad's the one over there with the big giant white lens, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're we're coming up in about 15 minutes left in this, and I want to make sure that we touch on the wow. S series. Yeah. You, oh, yeah. Let's talk S for sure. Yeah. So there there were a couple of questions and, and uh, comments, actually. Let me go back to this screen real quick because I want to bring up the chat because um, I actually sure. want to address a couple questions that did come in specifically, and that's um, – some comments about how, you know, uh, the S series, you know, might not be the most suitable for, for sports photography, you know, being able to track people <laughs> I down. I disagree. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Um, <laughs> and, and looking at that, uh, you know, because obviously a lot of people I think are getting the opinion that, you know, you don't use the S series um, and having the comment nope. that, that the S series can't handle, you know, sports photography. Well, I, I, I want to go through these images that you have because, you know, yes, 100%, the S series can capture sports photography. Um, and and, not and you're not going to guess which S series camera I used either because it's the least one you would think. And that's, yeah, that's that's exactly that point. You know, looking at, at the images that we have here, so these are the, the S series images that you sent over. You know, we're looking at, you know, back to that kind of, you know, a little bit more separation in the background than what the Micro Four Thirds lenses have. Um, you see that you're working in some of these images with the 70 to 200 millimeter F4. So that's one of our S Pro lenses. That's and, right. You know, these images are, are exactly what you'd expect out of a professional piece of equipment for, you know, focus dead on and and that that separation and that beautiful color and, you know, keeping that shutter speed up. But before I go too far, could you tell everybody what camera you're using for a lot of these images? <laughs> Believe it or not, that's the 47 megapixel S1R. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm the guy that people will say, you know, oh, you can't, I, I will hear it from customers across the counter. You can't shoot sports with a 47 megapixel camera. Guess what? Yes, you can. It's nine <laughs> frames a second. It gives you this so much benefit. It's unbelievable. Yeah, you got a great 47 megapixel uh, image if they're right up on you. But sometimes that action is halfway down the field. So guess what? I can crop till no tomorrow and get acceptable images that still I can blow up huge and do great stuff with. And I think what you can really take, take the, when you look at these, really look at the color. Because yeah. the dynamic range on this is also what I think is really imperative. Uh, and if we have time, there's some images that I wanted to show kind of what I did from here's what the, the image that I started with and here's what I ended up with as far as cropping is concerned yeah, and then so also dynamic range because yeah, so let's actually look benefit. at those I mean here's a game and you know a lot of people will will uh, know this up in the Seattle area um, the Seattle stadium it is super bright if it's a sunny day on one end and it's really dark on the other so it's kind of hard to work with so I've got a lot of images that may have been in the shadow and dark, but then I can just crop till no tomorrow. I mean, we love some of the, yeah, here you go. So kind of dark underexposed, but then you can open it up and make it look fantastic. Yeah. Um, here's, here's this one. I, this one I love. So you can see there's number eight catching the ball and the refs in the way. But then if we show my next image, I think some of these might be a little yeah. out of order. Let's actually okay. back this one up here. So we're looking yeah, we at go. we're looking at this image here. And yep. if we go in and then take a look at what you're able to, to crop out of that, you know, you're jumping so in to be able to come there. 47 megapixels, now like what you get. And I love the look, and it doesn't show very well on, on over the internet, but you know, the look on every one of those people in the stands faces. Oh, he's got that ball. Oh no, he's gonna go for a touchdown. I mean, it is great. It's great. Yeah. I mean, you can even see the lady from the Seattle. I think she's from the Seattle Times. This was like 50-degree weather. For me, it was freaking cold. <laughs> and she's there in flip-flops. So, you know, it was great. Hey, there you go. So there's, there's the other image here that, that I really liked. So you have, yeah. you have this, so, this shot here. 
So I crop top and bottom, just giving you kind of that nice panorama. A lot of what I have to do for the website is banner type images. Mm -hmm. So they're always looking for kind of these images that show across. So I love to shoot this kind of back shot of the quarterback coming back and, and bringing the ball back. But then, you know, let's see. That's the full width of 47 megapixels. Yeah. But now watch what happens as we crop in. And now you can actually get a cool quarterback shot out of that. And then for fun, I'm like, oh, look, they have Adidas as their sponsor. Look at how sharp that image is. You can now look at his lips. You know, he's kind of sunburnt or he's going to, you know, <laughs> got red cheeks. If that was Ray Maluga, he'd have his dad uh, written in on his eye black. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Mind blowing so what I can do with an S series camera and shoot sports. And that's the last thing that uh, anybody would ever expect. Yeah. So, you and know, I'll, that... I'll add one other quick thing and then I'll let you get back, Sean. Um, I shot these last year. Um, I believe it was in early October, which was before the 2.8 uh, 70 to 200 had been released. So this is the 200 millimeter or 70 to 200 2.8 lens. And that is shot with 7200 f4, wide open at f4. So that background will drop even more when I now go out and shoot sports when we get out of COVID, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, there's not much sports going on for me for football. Uh, there are just a few shooters in the stands, and they have to shoot from way up on the second tier of the seats. Um, so <laughs> hopefully we'll get back to this sooner or later, maybe next season. I'll be back, but I'll be using uh, – the 70 to 200, uh, 2.8, and I'll probably be putting on that teleconverter so I get that at 400 millimeters. Yeah. So, um, you know, looking at, at with the S-Series, is there anything that you change in your, your autofocus approach from the G-Series when you're working with, you say, like the S1R? It's pretty much identical. Uh, I'm still using custom multi, and I'm working it around with the joystick and putting it where I want to be, uh, and I find it wicked fast. But then I'll go one step further. I can't wait to get out on the football field with an S5 uh, because <laughs> I find that the S5 autofocus is just nuts. So it's so good. Now, of course, those things are coming to the regular rest of the S series. So um, I'll probably still be out there with S1R, but using the same features of the new uh, firmware and, and algorithms for the autofocus. Yeah, you know, I was I was actually about to just mention that that like, you know, with the S5, it's awesome, you know, because obviously you get a smaller, lighter full-frame camera. Yep. Um and in 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 all basic dimensions, I mean, the thing is pretty much almost identical to the same size as a G9. So G9, it, I yeah. get them I get them confused sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, you know, there's there's that big big benefit there, but those all of those autofocus improvements for photographers are all coming to the S1, the S1R, right. the S1H, um, and those are coming. What is it next week on the twenty fourth? Yep, right around the corner. So, so for for those that are shooting with standard S, the current S series cameras, you only have a, a about another week left, and then you know that firmware is out publicly, and and you guys get to take advantage of that stuff as well. Um. So they're yeah, I can't wait to get out with seventy two hundred and S five. I think that's kind of going to be my my kind of go to, and then probably an S one R. Hey, there you go. So um, when when you're working on the sidelines, how many um, how many batteries do you typically uh, bring with you? <laughs> uh, GH five. I'm usually we've got one in the battery grip and one in camera. That will handle me through the entire uh, half. So I usually only need four batteries. So. And, I, and I'm only replacing them just because I want to. I can probably get through uh, an entire game on one set, but I like to just make sure I've got, you know, full battery power at all times. So I work with four batteries, two for the first half and two for the second half. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't need more than that. <laughs> um, yeah. So... I did with somebody else. <laughs> so let's hear. So we got about... Five more minutes left in this session. Let's let's um, see what other kind of questions do we have in here. Um, just as a reminder, uh, so so for anybody that's over on Facebook or even in the the Photo Plus platform, uh, drop your questions in. Tag at Lumix Cameras, and um, for the next around five minutes uh, that we got left, we'll be able to continue asking, um, uh, getting your guys' questions uh, answered. Um, let's see here. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Ask away. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, let's see. This one was what, I, what AF settings on the full frame. We covered that one. Uh, we talked about filters, that you're not using uh, filters. Um, this is one that we actually kind of glanced over. So for your, for your more wide-angle close-up shots, which is, your, which is the lens you're currently using? So with um, S series, I'm using 16 to 35. Uh, and then on G series, I'm using eight to 18. Those are pretty much my two favorites. Cool. Yeah. And I'm, I'm waiting on that 24 millimeter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, now for, for micro four thirds, I think what's really cool too, is that, you know, we offer, there's three kind of ultra wide lenses that are available for the system. Um, you know, we have the seven to 14 millimeter, which is one of the older series lenses. It's a solid lens. Um, yeah, it's just a little bit older. Uh, yep. That one's a fixed f4. Then we have the eight to eighteen millimeter that Michael was mentioning before. That's a two point eight to f4, so you get that nice fast two point eight for your eight millimeter wide angle stuff. Uh, and it takes and, filters. Yes, yeah, and and it takes filters for those that do want to um, attach those. But then there's also the ten to twenty five millimeter f one point seven that came out. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think a yeah. lot of people have assumed that that lens, obviously because of how we launched it, I mean, it is a stellar videographer's style lens, but for photographers... I love that, that lens. Yeah, having 10 millimeter wide angle, it's a 1.7 for those you know low light scenarios. You're able to keep depth of field, um, keep your depth of field while also having a faster aperture because that's a benefit with Micro Four Thirds. Faster aperture, lower ISO, yep. a little bit more increased depth of field. So that's where you can use that advantage um, use that as an advantage for your style of shooting. Um, all three of them are going to be stellar choices for wide angle shooting. Um, it's just a matter of which one works best for your platform. So hopefully that um, yep. kind of answers your, your uh, question. Um, the question that came in again, I'm 10 to I'm, 25 at F one seven has amazing bokeh. I love that piece of glass. Yeah. Um, so let's see here. One of the other questions was from Keith. Can't find the AF multi settings. Um, so when, when you go into your camera menu, I don't have a camera set up for this, but, um, that actually will be, we're going to have a session, uh, in two weeks. That is another one of our AMA sessions. So we'll definitely make sure to bring that question up uh, on that stream as well. Sure. Um, we'll actually walk through it to get it, but when you click on the AF, uh, se uh, selection menu, it's a little, uh, one, two, three, four, it's a little five dots with the square around it. Um, yep. you look into the custom multi. And uh, it's it's in there. It's on the uh, far right hand side. Yeah. Uh, here's a good question, Michael. Uh, and this will actually be probably the last question that we get in for this uh, this stream. Uh, which which modes are you shooting in when you're photographing? Aperture, shutter, manual. <laughs> aperture priority, baby. Wide open and let it let it ride from there. So I'm an aperture priority shooter. So of course I've got it wide open and I'm keeping my eye on my shutter speed all the time so i will be an aperture priority if it's a night game then uh i might even whip out a gh5s because i can shoot uh dual native iso and shoot up to like iso 10,000 or 12,000 and get incredible images same thing with an s5 or an s1 or an s1h um yeah. but working that way but keeping an eye on my shutter speed always so if i'm wide open and my shutter speed isn't falling where i need to then I'm boosting up my ISO to make sure I get that perfect exposure triangle. Yeah. And for, for those that do have some of the micro four thirds cameras, it's, it's pretty, um, pretty cool that you also have the ability in some of the cameras to, uh, set minimum shutter speed when you're using aperture priority, right. which is something I yep. do for street photography. I imagine it's incredibly useful for, for sports photography as well. Most definitely. All right. Well, unfortunately, we have to actually wrap this session up. Um, I want to thank uh, everyone that, that tuned in. Michael, I want to thank you for, for sharing your expertise with everybody here, as Google's yelling at me that it's uh, 3.30 here. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> so again, um, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Those that are over on the Photo Plus Plus platform, thank you guys for all joining in as well. Um, remember that on the platform, you can always be requesting one-on-one -on -one sessions with Michael, myself, Brandon, or Jack. Uh, we are available to, you know, kind of walk through, dive more, you know, dive into more detail with some of these topics that you guys have, uh, for your, um, styles of photography. Now, 
for those over on the uh, YouTube channel and anyone that's hanging around over on the Photo Plus channel, I know there are other events going on right now. Um, I want to bring up a couple of things that we have going on uh, for everybody. Uh, let's see here. Let's work. There it goes. So we have uh, another session next week with uh, Jack Salamanchuk, although I did realize, and uh, Jack is going to laugh at this because he's, uh, he's monitoring the chat in here. Uh, I did spell his name wrong in this title, so I do apologize, Jack. Uh, but we, we have Jack Salamanchuk joining us next week for uh, macro light painting and live composite. Uh, so you're definitely going to want to uh, join us next week at the same time, Tuesday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, for a session with that. So we'll be talking a lot with Micro Four Thirds and Full Frame um, with the S-Series because of that um, uh, live composite functionality. But one of the coolest things, uh, and uh, hopefully I'm, I'm, I'm okay to actually release this out there now, is that we have an email address now set up for Lumix Live. So I know a lot of people have been asking and, and putting your questions in for our AMA sessions, and I've been typically trying to pull those from the Q&A section that comes in, all the chat that you guys have here, uh, or even through, uh, and it's a, a 2.30 p.m., uh, Oh, uh, sorry, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. My bad. I'm in Austin, so I'm in Central Time. I apologize. Um, anyway, yes, so we have an email address set up for Lumix Live Q&A uh, events that we're running typically at the end of every month. So uh, if you guys have questions that you want to submit for Lumix Live, uh, these are going to be specifically just for the AMA sessions. Uh, you are free to uh, shoot those over to us. Uh, I'm going to drop it into the uh, chat in here in a moment. Uh, but we're going to work to try to get you know more of the content that you guys are asking for, uh, specifically on those AMA sessions. Uh, we won't be responding from that email address, so just as a heads up, it's not a back and forth email address. It's just something for you to be able to send content in or, or uh, questions in for me to kind of collect and create programming off of. Um, and any email that comes in, I will definitely be taking a look at it, creating stuff for it. And uh, when we do address topics, I will, you know, kind of let, let those know who asked the question that, that we've, uh, you know, kind of addressed it. So outside of that, that's my little bit of a ramble on the email address. So I apologize for you guys listening to me ramble again. Um, again, thank, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, again, we'll be live next Tuesday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time, same place. If you're new here and you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, you don't want to miss any of the things that we have coming on this channel. Uh, and also hit the bell icon. It helps us out. It helps you out so you know when we're going live. And uh, I look forward to seeing all of you in the next session next week. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.